now let's look at the compilation process in C okay so speaking about the compilation process remember the first stuff in your C um, programming is that there will always be a source code which we know as the high level language okay so your source code which you always save as .c using the .c extension so the .c file is what we call the source code then before the source code before it gets to the compilation process it will first pass through a preprocessor now this preprocessor is those stuff those hash include you are seeing like those hash include stdio.h so that's just like an example so what's those dot that include stdio.h does which is an stdio.h don't forget is actually an header files so that header file adds as its own file at like internally so we're just including it to our source code okay so it's part of what we could use some certain functions also that's why we can use print f and the likes so all those other files always come with its own functions and features inside our code okay so we're using the hash include is just a way of bringing down those resources inside our major code then it will now make our code look long though we might not visually see the process about it's long but to make it looks it's not make it look long in a way so the single dot c file will seem long then it's not pack everything at once to the compiler okay so that's the that's where we now start with the compilation process so from the compiler it converts to your code to assembly code then enter inside the assembler which creates an object file which is dot o so the dot o extension for linux okay so the dot o file is an object file so it's always a um, compiler creates object files all right which is dot o as means it is windows windows use obj dot obj all right that's the extension for windows but for linux it uses dot o then from the object files then it will move to the linker so the linker is a combination of the object files the ansi libraries just jam pack everything and convert everything to an executable file okay when you're talking about executable file for example with your windows pc executable file if you notice is it usually end with .exe like if you want to download the software you always see it end with .exe so that's an executable mm executable file in terms of windows but in terms of linux linux don't need any extension to create an executable to name an executable file okay so you can just name it any word any i want to name it without even putting any dots anything extension i hope you get what i'm saying so this is just like a very good very good explanatory diagram in terms of explaining what compilation process is so today we are going to practicalize it in a way so i want us to practicalize it and see how it really works so it's not just listening to the stories it's seeing how it works all right so let's get started let me open my ubuntu okay um so so what should you let me see i think i'm in my own directory okay um let me just quickly create a new directory i will name this one compile folder like i just just want to name it compile all right so let me use small letter i don't like using no let me use capital letter compile okay so i'm entering inside the now so we have nothing inside so what i would like us to start with first is that let's write a script that runs the preprocessor okay but before we do that that means i will need to first have a .c file i need to first have a source code okay so let me first create a file a .c file so let me just this is um what should we name it now let me name it main.c okay so this is main.c that's the, the name i chose to name my code now my c code so I'll emacs it, which will take me directly to my emacs editor. Then let me just I'll just quickly uh, type some C programs there. It's fine if you don't get what I'm typing yet, but you will understand it later on. So just assume there's uh, there's a C file. So let me just quickly create a basic file. So main. So I just created a very very simple very very simple c program so let's just save this and um, don't forget anytime you're using emacs it's always good to leave an empty 
line after wherever you've stopped so i'm going to save it here so, all right in case you don't know emacs i have top i've already made tutorial on emacs and pi so you can check my previous videos you surely see it all right so we've created our main dot seed so let's see what is inside which app the my contents inside so good that was what i typed inside all right so we have our own c program now so now i want to run the preprocessor remember what i said about this pre and this preprocessor it starts with this for example hash include so we're including an header file those h files which has other codes inside of it inside our main.c so the preprocessor will just bring everything down inside this my main dot c that's what it does okay making it as a single one code then to make the code look large in a way okay so let's write a script that runs this my main dot c through the preprocessor and let's see how the result is when it comes to preprocessor like we want to output the results so first that we're going to say gcc dash e then our name of file our name of file is main main dot c okay then dash o then we can give it a name so let's name this one pre main so i choose to name it let me use this method so i choose to name my main dot c in terms of how it should look like in the preprocess so i choose to name it pre main okay you can choose to name it any name you want to name so i just want to name it something related to preprocess so that word you get so enter so let me ls all right so this is the pre post and the pre processor outlook so for us to really see how it looks like then we can view it using can i think we can view it using cards you can see this was the line of code i ran this small portion here okay but then look at what is at the top of it so all this stuff that you are seeing all this let me not call it jargon like all this complicated stuff that you are looking at here uh what is under this um include stdio.h so that's just all these things we are seeing here are the files that are inside this stdio.h header so the header files okay so if you now notice that this code here is now at the bottom the very bottom of it so is this whole file that's will be compiled together at once not just your code alone so keep that at the back of your mind so that's just what i want to understand you can see so it's everything like that then will now be compiled in the by the compiler all right so i hope you get this aspect very well um so next up um we can i think we've done this stuff for in shell navigation in not navigation itself but that's shell aspect whereby there's uh, there's a command called exports so export command whereby you can rename a file like i can choose to rename my main.c to something else whereby i won't need to be always calling main.c for example now if i say exports it should, let me just type exports so export alone will show you stuff that are declared in my ubuntu you can see home my home is home and my username Lexis code. So the same with others. My login name, that's my username for login Lexis code. So all this information you can say shell, beam bash. So all this user Lexis code. So you can see all these information are just like a way of declaring something in a way. So you can just declare your own stuff in your shell. By doing that, you can say exports. Look, in, look below though exports then the name and you have you have to use capital letter you notice this place all this stuff are capital letter here home lang all in capital letter so you are going to use capital letter so i can choose them in my own as x file okay so i chose to name it x file equal to main dot c now what this stuff does mind you is not actually composite to do this do this in real world okay it's not really composite just your personal taste okay so but let's say for example something like this now so what's what what is kind of all this command will do is that this your main.c will be assigned inside x file that means sometimes i won't need to type main.c whenever i want to call main.c i can choose to call type x file and to still process as if i'm calling main.c okay that's what it's just that's the only thing if you want to do ls you won't see it here but it's just that's already stored inside your 
environment. So it's part of the environment variable. So for us to view it, if I say um, export again, exports, let's find it. You can see x file main.c. So it has been saved inside the environment variable, just like others. So it's just something, it's just something you just need to know at the back of your mind. Okay. Um, let me move my page one page up. All right. So I can choose to also check it using print F command. So the print and print ENF. I don't know how to pronounce it in the way. It just means print environment. Okay, print environment variable. The ENF is a short way of writing environment. So print environment. Then if I say X file, which was the name I gave it, you can say main.c. Alright, so that's just it. So next let's look at how to write how to write a script that compiles C file but does not link it. So now when it comes to the compilation process after the preprocessor has done its own process they will not start the major compilation process okay the preprocessor is not part of compilation process it's just a stage before we then enter inside the compilation process so now on starting the compilation process we are going to say gcc c flag which is that c then your name of the file that you want to compile okay so if i click enter it will work and mind you i can choose to use main.c or I can choose to use this X file. Either way, it will still work very fine for you. And so mind you, if you want to even use this X file, you first need to put your dollar sign, then X file. That is a way of calling it. Okay. Oh, so that's just it. Or should we use this? Should we use this? Mm, we will use we will, we will just choose to use it later. But let me just for this time around, let me just use the main.c. So main.c, so I'm GCC <laughs> main.c dash C enter type return default to int oh oh okay 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 stream me an error let me quickly go back to my emacs and add something to that my code um i don't know if there's a need for me to explain what that error means i'm not sure if you've really started c learning much of c yet but what is just them that i should put an integer here okay but just know that on the norms like if i use code blocks or some editors they don't need me to put the int because by default main is saved as int all right so probably ubuntu is enforcing it so let me do it again so this is c dash c main dot c enter good so let's see ls all right so this is our main dot c this is our object file remember i said the compilation process which will create an object file which is this dot o all right let me delete this main this other main dot c stuff the emacs stuff all right so uh -huh, good so we have our normal source code we have now our object code then we have our the way our processor looks like all right so that's just how to run the compiler so let's see how assembly look like. So we have to run, we have to run the assembly code. So I'm going to say GCC for assembly. GCC S flag capital letter S. Okay, not small letter. There is a difference with the small letter and capital letter. Probably I will explain it later in the video. So then the name of the file. So I can say main dot C. So well, since I've been using main the system, and let me just use that environment variable which I created. It's just like an alternative way of doing it. So you can see it still works. So if I say ls, you can see it has created the assembly file also for me. Let's look at how the assembly file looks like. So main.s. So this is how it looks like. Okay. So this is how it will look like when it's entering the assembler which then creates the object file that we've already seen. Okay, so let me just ls this. Um, let's see the object file too, even though we don't really understand how it may look like. I thought as much. <laughs> so it will try to look in a weird way, but the computer understand what is going on there. So that is, that is its own business. All right, so at least we've looked at how to run our preprocessor to see how it really works internally. We've looked at how to compile 
a C program, okay? We did GCC dash C, then the name of the file. Then also we've written a script whereby we could get to view how our assembly code look like. Okay, then we did GCC S flag, capital letter S minus S flag. All right. Then the name of the file. Okay, um, I made mention about that aspect of the S flag. So I said, don't make the mistake of using small s because it will actually mean something else. So let me just show you what I'm trying to say concerning that. So if I say ls, can I say use small s? I'll, let me list it. You can see this a.out is actually an executable file in a way. Okay, but and this is the default name it brings. So for example, if I want to view it, so if I want to run it, I'll say dot forward slash the name of it a dot out okay which prints one for me actually the code i the stuff i could inside let me say main.c i'm telling the stuff i'm telling the c program to run to print out x for me and i i can see i declared x as one that's why we are seeing one here so that's the output of my executable code which is correct all right so that is it about that and um i think lastly let's look at how to create an executable file which well this is one way this is one way but not really i will not say not i was i will just say not really a standard it's actually one of the standard way but it's not really a usual way of doing it okay so let me just show you the usual way of creating your executable file from your object files okay so so to do that i'm just going to say gcc um just see then the name of the file which is main.c okay dash o all right then you can give it now a new name you can see this one was a default name of a dot out so this one you can choose to give it a new name okay um let me just name this one um x like executes main or executable file subset. Okay, let me just name it executive. Executes. I'm just name it executes. All right. So now GCC name of the file which is main.c our uh, O flag and executes. So if I click enter ls, you can see we have here our main.o. I mean, where is it? Our executes. Yeah. So this color, this color shows it's an executable file itself on its own. All right. So let me just remove the a dot out stuff so we are left with all of this so if, again if i do that same forward slash execute it should give me that same one you can see it's that same one we are seeing here all right so this is just how to understand what your compilation stuff is practically so we'll see now it looks like i hope you understand this if you have any question you can leave it in the comment box don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends have a lovely day.